Good evening and welcome to Mailbag Monday, number 13. Ah, ah, ah. That was stupid. <laughs> Fun fact about the number 13, though, with all the spooky connotations it has, a lot of people don't know this, but at 13, that is the age that one officially becomes a teenager. So if you have a 13th birthday coming up, congratulations and welcome to Teenagehood. Guys, welcome to Mailbag Monday. If you have questions, do shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and make sure in the subject to include Mailbag Monday. And that way I may or may not ignore your email, and you might could be featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, if you haven't already, please do like, share, subscribe, all that kind of good YouTube stuff. Makes me feel happy and, you know, the whole algorithm thing. Anyway. Got a great episode for you today. Got a lot of good questions here, so let's dive right into this. The first question has to do with antennas. Imagine that. So this viewer asks, would you use an inverted V instead of a sloper and reasons why? There's a couple different reasons why one might want to use one version over the other. One having to do with actual uh, radiation patterns. So uh, assuming we're talking about uh, either a dipole or an NFET half wave. Let's just say an NFET half wave. An inverted V will take your somewhat directional pattern, uh, you know, broadside to the antenna is where most of the radiation pattern is going to go out with a dipole. And an NFET half wave is just a dipole fed at the end. So the radiation pattern should be the same for either of the antennas. What happens when you do an inverted V? is that makes it a bit more omnidirectional. So, uh, you know, at the points of the antenna, the ends, you would typically have a null there. So by bringing it down to an inverted V, you're kind of eliminating that null. So if you want to have more directionality, use it as an inverted V. Uh, I, I don't know as much about the radiation pattern of a sloper. I'll, I'll tell you that uh, my real world experience tells me that it kind of doesn't matter. I'm, I'm pretty much hitting the same parts of the world regardless it's still a dipole so it, you know it's not you're not putting gain in in one direction versus the other um so in that regard it, it kind of doesn't matter i mean yeah these things are measurable but um for me it's more a question of what is easier to put up an inverted v you're going to need three uh contact points with the antenna you're going to need some way to support the center and you're also gonna need some way to support the two legs of the dipole. So typically you could run the center over a tree or use a mast and then run the legs out and guy them with a stake or something like that. Uh, so that takes a little bit longer to set up. Now with the NFET half wave, you only have two points of contact in which uh, either your feed point is up in the air or it's closer to the ground and you have either the wire or the feed point sloping somewhere. And that to me is just easier because I have one less thing to do as far as staking it. So it, it, it goes up just incredibly fast. So really the, the, the setup would be really more why I would use a sloper versus an, versus an inverted V. But um, I mean, if, if you watch my video that I did for the Pactena NFED half wave years ago, it's actually on Pactena's website on their homepage. I'm using the NFED half wave in an inverted V and I got Alaska probably, I think, for the first time portable, and I was just screaming like a girl, and you can see it on camera. It's towards the end, but... <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. Experiment. See what kind of uh, results you get. To me, it, it honestly doesn't really matter from a, a getting out point of view uh, so much as just set up. But uh, yeah, I hope that uh, gives you a little food for thought there. Thanks for writing in. Our next question has to deal with how far can you pota? This viewer asks, I'm currently getting a station set up so I can start doing POTA. Good for you. My question is, what's the furthest distance you have spoken while doing POTA and on what antenna? So in all honesty, I can't really remember every contact I've made or how far they are, but a couple of recent contacts come to mind. One would be uh, Hawaii, uh, Whiskey Hotel 6 Echo Yankee is uh, 3,946 miles away from me. I most recently worked him on a two element wire Yagi, but I also have gotten him on my Tar Heel on the trunk of my car. So really depends more on propagation. Another one would be Spain, Echo Alpha 2, Echo Zulu. He's 5,189 miles away from me. 
I get him uh, quite a bit, sometimes on the Tar Heel, sometimes on an NFED Half Wave, sometimes on the DX Commander. How's Alaska for you? How about the North Pole, Alaska? Both AL7KC and NL7V are in the North Pole of Alaska, and that is uh, 3,210 miles away. Again, I've worked them on many different antennas. Uh, the Tar Heel on the car, the DX Commander, um, the NFET Half Wave, most recently that same two element wire Yagi. So, uh, my advice would simply be get what works for you. Don't get hung up too much on what antenna you have. Get something and get out there and start calling CQ and kind of let the bands do what they're going to do. Now, yes, we could get on a whole diatribe about different antennas and gain versus omnidirectional versus this versus that. You know, put up an antenna, get on the air, have fun. Okay. I promise you, you will not stop at one antenna no matter what happens, <laughs> unless you just <laughs> fall out of the hobby. So. This next question is one that I've gotten quite a few times over the past few years pertaining to Parks on the Air. This viewer writes, Hi Mike, POTA question. How come there aren't any county or city parks listed for POTA? There are only state or federal. Is there a reason for this? So I've done a bit of research and the answer is actually quite shocking. The reason that Parks on the Air only has state or federal parks in the program is because Parks on the Air is a program that is only for state and federal parks. It's that simple, don't overthink it. Why can't I ride a motorcycle in Tour de France? Because it's a bicycle race. Our next question is a little bit of a follow-up on the coax that we touched on in the last episode regarding RG316 and RG174. This viewer writes, I watched with great interest your comparison between RG174 and RG316. Thank you. I want to have your thoughts regarding both coax for a mobile HF, VHF, UHF installation where there will be some bending around the corners. So if that's your only concern is just bending around corners, knock yourself out with either one of them. I would still go the RG316 route as it is a better coax in terms of uh, loss. You'll have less loss with that. But without really knowing what you're running, how you know what antennas are you using, how are you splitting it, what are you doing, um, just as an overall blanket statement, I have no problems whatsoever. My HF radio, the 891 in the car uh, with the Tar Heel antenna with the Diamond K400 mount, that Diamond mount has uh, comes with RG316 and it's all run through the trunk and I've coiled it up and kind of tucked it away and it works just fine. Now, keep away from really sharp, like 90 degrees, super hard bends, you know, give it some bit of uh, an easement, if you will, but uh, no, you won't have any problems with it. And even on uh, VHF and UHF uh, at 446 megahertz for RG316 at 20 feet, let's say, you're gonna lose about 3.8 dB uh, in, in just loss due to, to heat and, and whatnot. So, it, it, you know, if you're going to have a separate radio just for uh, VHF, UHF, make sure you get a gain antenna, specifically like the Comet antenna that uh, I did a video on a few months ago. I replaced uh, my, my VHF, UHF antenna with this beautiful Comet. I'll put a link in the, in the description below. Uh, that has more gain than you're going to lose in the coax so you're making up for that so for example on 446 megahertz you have a 3.8 db loss but on 70 centimeters with this antenna you have i think somewhere in the in the neighborhood of like 7 db gain with the antenna so everything you lost in the coax you're making up by added gain with the antenna so that's really the more important thing but just as a as a coax that i mean that's what's in my car my vhf uhf actually has i think it's it's probably rg8x i can't tell from look, just looking at the coax and then there's just a little splice from the from the factory uh where it goes to rg316 uh just to kind of get through the crack in the trunk there but yeah no problem you I know mean, that's that's what i would use i wouldn't be stuffing big heavy coax throughout my car so you should have no problems whatsoever with that and lastly we have a question about the dx commander 10 meter mast this viewer writes i was catching up on your videos and just rewatched the one on the carbon fiber mast setup that would be the soda beams carbon six i was just wondering if you had a chance to try out callum's 10 meter soda expedition pole you mean these Yes, I have. 
Uh, not sure if it's carbon fiber. It's not. It's fiberglass. But at less than three pounds and stowed at 28 inches, it's actually 24 inches. And if you want to get technical, it's 60 centimeters, which is about 23 and a half inches. I thought it'd be right up your alley. It is. I know you like the antenna he sent you, so just wanted to throw it out there. Thank you. I think that pole with a chameleon LEFS with a choke might just be the ideal travel kit. I'll be getting a set myself for field day this year. Now, this is why I actually wanted to answer this question. And uh, thank you for writing in, by the way. Yes, the DX Commander Mast is fantastic. I love it so much, I wanted another one, okay? That's why I have two. Uh, specifically with the Chameleon Lightweight NFED Sloper and a choke, regardless of whether you put the feed point on the mast or if you have the wire on the mast, that antenna is going to be quite heavy for this kind of mast, uh, which is why you don't see me using that setup, okay? When you start putting wire on a mast and sloping, it pulls a lot. If you watch my video, I think I did like fastest end fed half wave setup or something. I'll put a thing up here somewhere. Oh, we're looking at this camera. I'll put a thing there. Even 26 gauge wire that I use, once you start tensioning that, these masks start to bend. The, the wire on the lightweight end fed sloper, while it is incredible wire, it is amazing. That is one of my top three favorite antennas that I own, and I own a lot of antennas. I think you're going to be disappointed if you use really any kind of fiberglass mast to support the weight of that. Now, if you have the feed point up in the air like they suggest, like hoisting it over a tree branch or something, uh, you could use the mast to raise the wire, but again, you're, you're not going to get... 10 meters out of it. The thing is going to bend over. I mean, it's like a fishing pole. Uh, it, it is, kind of. Um, yeah, you could get it to work, but I would I would really recommend looking at a more lightweight antenna like a pack tenna or something if that is your goal is to use something lightweight and compact and, and all that. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, I, I wish you luck. Thanks for writing in. And... Uh, you have some catching up to do on the channel, I think, because I've used the DX Commander Mast a lot. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Welcome to the channel. I suspect you're probably new. But thank you so much for writing in, and, and I, I do hope that that in, in this answer you, you did find some, some good information there. Um, I'd be curious what your actual deployment setup plans are, so shoot me another email. I, I, I'd, I'd really like to hear about it, and uh, maybe we can kind of get you steered in the right way but yes absolutely just a side note the dx commander 10 meter mast out of all the masts that are out there maybe spider beams is another one the uh, the dx commander 10 meter travel pole or expedition or pole to pole whatever he's calling it these days is probably one of the most readily available and easily accessible uh 10 meter telescopic masts that are on the market right now and they're rather affordable too so I, I would say between them and spider beams maybe soda beams uh those would be three if you're looking for a mask so thanks uh thanks for writing in good question and just like that number 13 came and went thank you all so much for watching thank you all for writing in i'm getting barraged with questions it's getting harder to pick them now and that is the goal some of them have been repeats some people need to go back and watch other episodes, but that's okay. You could be new to the channel and have no idea that, uh, you know, there's 12 other episodes before this. So uh, if you do have questions, please write me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. And in the subject, do include Mailbag Monday. And that way, I will be sure to see it and hopefully not ignore it. But who knows? We may or may not. I, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, I'm grateful. So... <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.